confusing in itself, isn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> living the royal life and to be a normal Nasser life. Yeah. Coming out yeah. of that. That's right. What an amazing contrast of lives. We're going to really miss you, by the way. It's been wonderful <laughs> having you. Hope you have a great weekend away. Um, what else, Moses? Okay, it says in Exodus 33, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. Okay, to yeah. I mean, that's a really yeah. incredible passage, isn't it? I mean, um, Moses, um, we were talking about this. Moses is rather like the Passover. Um, before the cross, the Passover was was really the focus of the Israelite um, uh, faith. Uh, Moses, so Moses was rather in the Old Testament time. Moses was rather like what well, Jesus is for us. I mean, you can't overdo that. But you know mm. what I'm saying? No. I mean, just say how incredibly significant Moses is. Anything else? What do you think of? Just first thing up is your Albert. Um. Uh, when he killed the Egyptian. Okay, yeah, early on. Yeah, good. I mean, these pictures, you can picture these things. You picture the baby in the bulrushes. Mm -hmm. um, you picture him growing up in Pharaoh's courts. Yeah. Um, as Albert mentioned, there's this incredible confrontation with this Egyptian and the Israel the next day. Um, then he goes to Midian, um, spends 40 years wandering around looking after sheep. Um, which, uh, you know, I mean, this is amazing. So much happened in this guy's life. Then the burning bush. Yep. Um, and then back, yes, John B. So, so the thing that stands out to me is that there's always the interaction between God, mm. Moses, and Aaron. Yes. The sort of dichotomy of a person, really, who's got, God has told him, you're going to need the Israelites. Yeah. And yet he can't. Talk then. The the what you know, it's such a simple thing, but he just he, he couldn't manage to do that. Um, so it's it's interesting how uh, you know God still helped him out, e even though he probably should have had you know more faith, I guess, in that instance. Yeah, I mean it's stunning now, isn't it? I mean this is a real person we're dealing with here. We're not dealing with um, some perfect person. We're dealing with a real, a very real person. Um, and then, of course, you've got the Ten Commandments. Mm. I mean, that's a, mm. that's a memory, isn't it? Um, yeah. Or a picture in our minds. Um, what have we got? And we've got all the travelling through the um, um, through the desert. And you've got the uh, um, him standing on Mount Horab, looking over, um, looking over the Promised Land. I mean, what an amazing person! The thing I want just to focus on tonight though is how much he changed. Mm. And the thing I'd like to focus on really is faith to change. Because I think often when we look at ourselves, we think, well, there's this and there's this and there's this about me that makes me not that great as a Christian or as whatever I am. Um, you know, as God's representative. I and we can think, well, I'm I'm not that great. Moses could easily, and in fact did say that, but he had the faith to be different. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight. It's really just faith to be different. Could I ask somebody to read? We'll just start in the Hebrews 11. We'll be in Hebrews 11. We'll, then we'll be in Acts. Um, and look at Stephen's speech. <coughs> and then. We'll go to Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4 and it gives some excerpts there. Um, yeah, would somebody read Hebrews 11 and read from verse 24 through to 29, please. Somebody read that, please. Yeah, please, to me. Okay. <clears throat> By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to, the, to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is, in, who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood, 
so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Okay, thank you, Zimmy. Great. What do we see going on here? What, what speaks to you about this passage? What sort of catches your, um, your attention? <clears throat> I'll be welcome. Um, yeah, somebody tell us. What, what, what do you see right here, John? Um, well, I think of, um, yeah, by faith, he was able to part the, the, the Red Sea and yeah. they, the, the Israelites went through as if on dry land. And it's like, you know, when you look at that story, and at, at first they're all trapped there, and the Egyptians are coming, all the, all the soldiers are coming, and it's like they're trapped and they're screaming, oh no, we're going to die. Yeah. And they don't have any faith, the, yeah. the normal Israelites, that God's going to rescue them. But Moses has faith, not just for himself, but for the whole right. nation so right. to rescue them. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Just, you know, as Christians, we're called to have the faith that stands in the gap for people around us. Um, you know, we're surrounded by people who sadly don't think much about God. Moses was surrounded by people who aren't very God-focused but he was able to um, draw people's attention um, and to have a faith to really stand the gap between people and God. And really that's what we're very much um, called to be as Christians, to really stand the gap, um, to really get people's attention and draw people to God. So think about that for yourself. I mean, that's a very definite step of faith, isn't it? Um, you know, it's just really make a difference in that way. Okay, brilliant. What else do you see? And Zim, what's in it? Oh, yeah, Zim. Um, one of the things that stood out for me here is the fact that he chose to suffer with God's people rather than just to uh, remain as a prince of Egypt and enjoy. You know, he, it was by faith he decided to you know, to, to suffer along with the Hebrews, to leave the, to leave the, 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 um, the palace yeah. So as to suffer with them, and then eventually he had God calling him. I mean, this again is very relevant for us, isn't it? Because by faith we try, you know, we set the bar high, and we aspire to be righteous people, um, and not just fit in with the standards yeah. of the world around us. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's by faith that we see Moses an incredible example. You know, just. You know, you, the calling you have and I have to be Christians is an incredible one of, of you know, of righteousness. Um, and uh, we're only going to achieve that by, by faith. So that's a really um, superb example. In the house. Yeah. Yes, please. And I think this uh, says, you know, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. So he, no, he didn't you know, bother about, no, maybe the king can even follow him and kill him because of what he has done. But he didn't fear about that. He didn't fear for the person. No, he feared about God. No, he was like, okay, I'm going. Whatever happens, I'm going to face it. So that's that's really a big thing here, definitely. Well, that's a really great point. That has so much application for us, doesn't it? To be faith, to, you know, to be godly in an ungodly world. I mean, it's, it's that's that's exactly the parallel of Egypt, isn't it? That Egypt was a worldly place, yeah. but he chose to be a Christian, if you like, um, so to speak. Right, let's turn to Acts chapter 7. <clears throat> Acts chapter 7. Now, Stephen is going to be stoned here. Um, would somebody read Acts chapter 7, verse 23 to 29, please? We read a bit of Moses right here. Who would read that, please? Well, read that. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Um, when Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, 
Men, you are brothers, why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. Thanks, Brian. Brilliant. Now, what is happening here? This is a different side of Moses we see here, but very inspiring nonetheless, and very, very helpful for our faith. So this is why I quite like this section, because it's all about Moses, t to me, um, having a form of faith, but not really understanding that he needed to rely on God. And so what he did is he took events into his own hands and did what he thought was right in his eyes and it wasn't really what God wanted him to do, which is why he was so distraught. Yeah. So for me it's like the turning point for Moses. This is where he realised that God was greater than him. Okay. That's why I like this section. No, it's really, I mean, I love this album because I think this gives you a real sort of raw side of him, doesn't it? Um, and this, this, you know, God's plan and his plan, there's sort of a, 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 a difference there, isn't there? Um, and uh, what do you think we learn about Moses, the raw Moses? What do we see right here as the, um, you know, revert type? Moses' natural self. What do we see here? He's an impatient person, isn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Which comes out later, though, at times as well. Yeah, I, I get the thing his away. character is, we, we're getting life from his character here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, sorry, to keep I was, going. I was saying with the tablets as well. Yeah. Came down and he, you know, he smashed the tablets. Um, right. In the water. You know, and so. although it probably came from a like a righteous anger, um, still sort of overflowed just in his response. Yeah. You know, mm. That sort of, I guess, impulsiveness. I think someone would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you see it, you see it a few times. With him. It's interesting. Isn't it? It's rather like what Don shared about, you know, the Moses we, you know, in Numbers twenty who gets banished from leaving the Israelites in the promised land. I mean, it's, that's a heavy challenge, but he's still there in Hebrews 11, mm. um, which is very, very, we're definitely meant to get vision for ourselves. There's a passage, isn't it, when in uh, James chapter 5, talking about Elijah, it says Elijah was a man just like us. Mm. Mm. You know, Moses was a man just like us. It's really good, I think, to remember that rather than thinking, you know, Moses, he was this amazing, perfect person, but he was somebody really who, you know, had his character flaws. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that impulsiveness, I think, is a reversing type, isn't he? Um, I wonder what we look at when we see our own characters. And we think about ourselves, what sort of things we, we you know, with us maybe we, we find. Um, one thing I've, I've really appreciated myself is that I, I'm by nature, I think I'm a very uncompassionate person. But my condition, my bouncing, all this stuff, has taught me so much about just being more tuned in to people's challenges. It's really helped me no end. But you know, we we really have to grow in areas of of uh, of our characters, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, and even even as much as we try and grow at times, we still just need God to rescue us. Mm -hmm. um, sure. What else do you think we see there? I'm so I'm interested in the raw Moses. It's all what Albert was talking about, but the the Moses he really was what? this impatient person. I then. think he. The, the last bit of this, it actually shows that maybe Moses is a little bit afraid of himself and what he's capable of doing. And so he, it seems like the sort of, you know, he's done a terrible thing and then he's, his decision is, well, I need to get away from this and I'll run, basically run away and hide for 40 years. Is that incredible? Um, it's almost as if he doesn't want to face up to the fact that, you know, he's got this other side to it. Is that an amazing point? I mean, 40 years, we're told he spends 40 years wandering around a million with sheep. 
<laughs> now, let me ask you this. What do you think he thought about when he was in Midian? Or he thought, what do you think he thought about? Knowing the sort of person he was. What do you think he chewed over in his head? I think just being isolated in, you know, being a prince and having all the sort of the attention and the busyness and everything else. Then suddenly he's in a completely deserted right. place. Yeah. So he must have had a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to think, um, and it probably, you know, humbled him in a, in a big way. Which you know, we're told in, in, yeah. in the Hebrew, and so in Numbers 12, verse 3, that Moses was the most humble man on the earth. He wrote that himself. Is <laughs> 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 that interesting? No. I mean, I mean, surely so much of that must have been developed, though, yeah. in this time of of self reflection. I mean, what a failure! Yeah. I think I, I find myself wondering. I think of Moses for these forty years. I think he must have found himself saying, "It wasn't meant to be like this." To me, Moses is a very aspirational sort of character. He really wants to make a difference. And the, as John D. mentioned, you know, he's got that sort of that, um, that frustrated side to him. He steps in, he's, his temper comes out, he, he, you know, he's, he's indignant, he, um, he kills this Egyptian and this stuff. And, Something is going on with Moses right here that, you know, he's going to rescue the people. And we've been told that they, that they tell him, who made you our rescuer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing line. I wonder if those words stuck in his mind. Mm -hmm. Those 40 years, who made you our rescuer? Mm -hmm. You know, Moses, it's not meant to be like this. I was... I was in the bulrushes, I was rescued, I was, you know, I was meant to have an incredible impact mm. on this world, mm. on this amazing aspirational birth, am I? Does anybody relate to that? I feel like if this is too good to just move on quickly from. Well, I, I, I mean, be... I, I think um, the yeah, Moses will probably have, uh, been thinking about what could have been but I also think that he probably suppressed the dream as well because right. I feel like I've had times in my life where I wanted to do incredible things but was in, was impatient was self-reliant um, went ahead of God and had some colossal failures yeah. that have made me think oh, it just wasn't meant to be yeah um, and then and I've suppressed some of those dreams and desires like Moses. And you see that because Moses grew up in, in the palace and yet it took a burning bush. Like it, it had to be something supernatural in a way to unleash some of that desire because he had suppressed it so deep and God had to perform miracles and convince him of the very thing that at one point he was so excited to do, but now he lost a lot of that self-reliance and, and self that desire to that god had to really wake him up right. to do it and and i i felt no i really appreciate that. we're going to come to that i mean I think that's that is a really good point um and uh, you know i think that as christians we need to have great aspirations um but sometimes things don't work out the way that we think they're going to work out um for several times for me in my life as a Christian, I've had times of real frustration with God. Um, I remember being in Birmingham, I think it was probably about 88, 89, and the churches were getting nowhere. We were trying so hard, we were getting nowhere. And half times you just get really angry with God, and God, you're meant to be doing something amazing, mm -hmm. and it's just not happening. I remember a time when, um, would have been about a few months before I moved to um, Thames Valley, I was in London at the time, and feeling so frustrated with God because, you know, God, is this the way you treat someone who tries to, to do something? You're feeling of, you know, we so much 
need and want to, um, to be used by him sometimes. And we get really, we do struggle. And I think that's sort of person Moses is. So I want to encourage you tonight, through faith, to really conquer these sorts of things. Through faith, to, to get, you know, to really um, have the visions. And it may not be that your plan is the same as God's plan, but God has a plan. And that's, I think it's wonderful. I, I, personally, I love the fact that we have these location services. You know, in High Wycombe, you've got your location service in, um, you know, in, in what well, other place? Lower Early, Oxford, Banbury, Basingstoke. I mean, there's so much happening. Um, but this really is an opportunity for us to dream big dreams. Um, and, and not to lose um, vision. Is there anything else there that anybody would like to bring out from, the that, that I from would Moses? Say is, um, it's interesting, when you look at Hebrews 11, he doesn't mention anything about any of the weaknesses of any of those people. Yeah. Which is like quite amazing. Like it doesn't talk about their sins or anything. All he mentions about is their faith, which shows you because of like what Jesus did, that those sins are no longer remembered. And now each of them had failures and weaknesses and they fell short and, and, and so on, whether it's Moses, whether it's Abraham, uh, whether it's David, you know, but more than anything, it seems like God is more interested in your faith. Because he said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we do fall short in many ways, but then we know that the work of sanctification has to take place in our lives. And it's like, you know, we have to go through trials and difficulties and so on. Um, but every, I mean, even to the extent of like Rahab, you know, she was a prostitute, but she's in that hall of fame for just that faith that she had. And no it's a really good point. Do you see what I mean? There's no mention. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, this else. is what tonight's cast is really about is that, you know, by faith we can, you know, we can be different, we can have bigger dreams and. Um, um, you know, we can dream big things. Let's go to Exodus. And uh, we're going to focus on that for a few moments here because I think it's very, very inspiring. Um, just the faith. Um, but I think it really helps me, and I think all of us, to appreciate that, that Mo what Moses, how important his faith was to him and how important our faith is to us. You know, it's so easy to write ourselves off and think, ah, oh, what disaster. Well, 40 years wandering around a million, achieving nothing. But by faith, that's not how it finished up at all. Um, let's, um, let's read in Exodus chapter 3, um, somebody read that. Here he is, all the way from South Kensington. Uh, which which verse, Tim? Um, would somebody, Albert, maybe you'd read verse chapter 3. Come on, come on, share with me. That's fine. Verse 1 to 3, please. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush, that, that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Right, thank you, Albert. The reason that this, I think, is a helpful passage is just, you know, and I know this was mentioned earlier, that what God had to do to, to sort of break into Moses's um, frustrated, disillusioned self, maybe, um, that, you know, he's, he's looking at this burning bush and he goes over and looks at it, God says, take off your shoes where you're standing is, is holy ground. 
and would simply read verse 11 through to verse 13, please. <coughs> Thanks, man. Um, but Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Mohan. Okay, so we're starting off right here. We've got the, the burning bush, and now we've got Moses' heart coming out. We've got Moses... So um, excuse me, Moses having to um, to deal with his excuses, if you like. Does anybody pick up on anything here that you find particularly of interest? <clears throat> How would you sum this passage up? It's fear, there, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of fear, a lot of inadequacy. Mm -hmm. Look at himself. Who am I? You know, why? I mean, we relate to this, don't we? Mm -hmm. This is us, this is our human side. Mm -hmm. But faith can overcome this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, faith is the thing that can overcome this. Um, and really what we see here is just, Moses starts to bring out um, the reasons why he's not the man. Mm -hmm. um, do you relate to that? You know, the feeling of, you know, I've been a Christian for a few years, um, I've tried this, I've tried that, but it's gone wrong, and actually, you know, it, it's like, it's like when um, um, you get, you have your hopes up, and then they get dashed, and then to get them back up again, is really hard, isn't it? Mm. Um, there's, there's the Shunammite. Do you remember the story of the Shunammite and how she uh, uh, she uh, meets Elijah? Elijah says, "What do you want?" And she doesn't really want to ask for a son, but she's never had a child. And then she has a child. She's really excited about it, but then the child dies, and she says to Elijah, "Didn't I tell you not?" Uh, you know, not to get my hopes up, not to sort of really get me dreaming and thinking amazing things. I think it's a little like that here with Moses. You know, it's a bit like, you know, I don't want to get my hopes up again. You know, but by faith, obviously, um, uh, amazing um, vision we can have. Does anybody else want to bring in the other side here, Richard? Moses was afraid. Which I agree with, but then he wasn't afraid of God, was he? He was afraid. Of well, God. isn't that interesting? Let's focus on that for a moment. Yeah. Okay, what we learn about it's Moses' relationship, relationship with relationship God, right? With God. He's not yeah. afraid. He tells God how he's feeling. Right, exactly. Now, what, how does that relate to us? Mm -hmm. How do we? We got to get something out of this. Cause we're absolutely dead on. What's that teach us about our relationship with God? It definitely something in there, isn't there? I mean, can we be ourselves with God? I was say it could be a bit more real. We can be real, can't we? I wonder if one of the, one of the things that holds a lot, of, a lot of us back at times is we have a certain picture of how we ought to be. Mm. You know, I could never say that to God because God is amazing. And, you know, I couldn't say that. But actually, God can take it. Mm. So I want to encourage us. One of the keys, I think, to us having greater faith is to be really honest with God mm -hmm. and to have the courage and the realness to tell God what's really going on. Mm -hmm. um, as compared to, you know, the sorts of prayers you ought to have. What do you think this teaches us about God's relationship with us? which is hitting a really good point here. What does this teach us about our relationship with God, do you think? 
John. Uh, I think it goes back to that passage in Hebrews where it says that uh, because of Jesus as for us, we can approach the throne of God with, with confidence. Right. So, uh, and um, I think, uh, you know, God chooses the weak to humble the strong. Yeah. It's okay. like, so, God okay. knows that we're weak. Yeah. Probably better than we do. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and but he he knows also what we're capable of. Yeah. Which we, we often we can't see that. Yeah. This is very inspiring, isn't it? I mean, mm. I think for me, probably one of the most inspiring things in my life is that is that I can be myself with God. Mm. You no, know, mm. God, there's perfect grace. God completely forgets mm. my sin. There's perfect grace. So I can move myself with God. If I, you know, Malcolm's my, my great friend. If I stamp on Malcolm's foot, it hurts. It's like, stamp my foot. Oh, that was terrible, you know. Oh, good kiss up. You know, but in a way, with God, it's a little bit different. We can be, this perfect grace, we can be ourselves with God to a much greater degree than we could even be with um, with a friend we really love, mm. um, which really helps, I think, and inspires us. Mm. Time is against us, so we must read on. Would somebody read um, uh, chapter 4, um, verse 1, please? I'll read. Yeah, please. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, mm. The Lord did not appear to you? Okay. Any thoughts? I think it's a completely rational thought, if you yep. ask me. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I'd think. If yeah. I was like, if I had to approach someone today and say, God sent me to do this, and I saw a burning bush, first thing <laughs> I'd be thinking is, are they going to say, you, you lost your mind. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know how we know really. Because it's the first thing I'd say to someone else, they came and said that to me. Yeah, <laughs> is it exactly incredibly that. real? Yeah. So real, isn't it? Somebody read verse um, 10, please, of the same chapter. Please. Moses said to the Lord, I am your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent to me either in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and tongue. Okay. Thoughts? He doesn't want to do it. He does Well, should we really think that? He's just trying. I mean, he's making. Really he's more concerned about the people that he's facing than he is about God. Right. Uh, through the whole thing. It's like, you know, it's like, I'm exactly the same way. It's like, he should be more concerned about God, but he's worrying about the people he's actually yeah. have, to, have to speak to because yeah. that's still that gap somehow between actually thinking God is really there yeah. and the thing that you're facing. This is thought, at least until this point, he doesn't seem to get that it is God that's going to do something. Right. He mm. continues to think it is he who is going to do mm. something yeah. Yeah. all through. So he's, he's, he's struggling with his inadequacies because he still doesn't see it. He sees like... God is telling him to do something. No, no, no. God is actually going to do something and he's going to use you mm. as, mm. As, as a medium or mm. as an instrument. That's very different from mm. God is telling me to go and do something. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so I think yeah. that, that is... It's amazing. That it's that relates to us so much, Ben. I was just going to say, it's even stranger that he asks that question after, you know, because in the previous verses, he sees a, his staff turn into a snake and then back into yeah. his staff again. He, he gets leprosy and then yeah. he's not got leprosy anymore. And yet he still asks, oh yeah, but I'm not very good at speaking. <laughs> Which is, when you put it into context, a bit of a strange thing yeah. to say. So he, I completely agree with your point. He still thinks that he's the one who's got to do it. Okay. As to God. Yeah, it's, it's that faith, isn't it? That we're really trying to talk about that. Any else? Also, but I think maybe also it's just from his past experiences. Like he, okay. When he was told off, like all the right. Yeah. Like don't our, anyway. don't our past linger with us oh, yeah. in times mm. they they haunt us, don't they? They're, they're these sort of skeletons <laughs> in the cupboard. They yeah. they're there just, but we can't 
you know, by faith we have to move on, but we just can't. Tony, would you read the last verse, please? Verse 13. <coughs> but Moses said, pardon the servant, Lord. Please send someone else. <laughs> <laughs> There's the real <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so real, isn't it? Um, we obviously need to wrap up. But it's an incredibly inspiring um, thing for us, isn't it? For us to realize that, you know, that God has amazing plans. Maybe his time scale isn't the same as our time scale. It's as... Uh, as has been said, you know, it's not about us, it's about God doing many things. Luke mentioned that. It, it's, it's about God doing extraordinary things through us. So I would really encourage us tonight, as we finish off our, our series of talks, which have been amazing about faith, just to, to not um, allow ourselves to be um, limited by us mm -hmm. and uh, you know lift our, our eyes to the hills more and just that incredible strength that comes from God that God will use us to do amazing things mm -hmm. which of course is what this last series is all about and what faith is all about is that God will do incredible things so thank you very much <clears throat> Thanks,